Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is part five and the final part of the Butterick 6018 sew along. So today we're going to be finishing off the dress, we're going to be installing the zip and hemming the dress with bias binding. So let's get started. The next thing I need to do is sew in the zip and we're going to do that from the bottom of the bit that we sewn, we'd sewed up earlier and that's just because this goes right up um, higher up the base of the neck than usual we don't need the zip to go the whole way up to get in and out of this dress and it's just it, I, just a decision that I made based on a vogue pattern that I made for my sister-in-law so I'm going to get this zip sewn in okay so I have lined up the top of the zipper with the top of or where the seam was that I've sewn earlier and I'm going to close this gap later with the traditional zipper foot but for the moment I have on my invisible zipper foot and it has little grooves on it and I like to move my needle over one tick or two ticks to the left to just help me get in really close nice and close to the zipper teeth. You can of course baste this in first and then get in close and I find that sometimes it is nice to have sewn not quite close to the teeth but nearly there to get the zip in position and then to go back afterwards and sew nice and close to the teeth to make it invisible. Once you've done that you want to make sure that the zip closes which mine does and then with my friction marker I have marked where the waist is so that I can line up this side of the zip with the other opening to make sure that we get our joints nice looking nice like we have here so I'm going to move my needle over to the right and so in the other side of this zip just the same the thing you want to note is that we've got a little bit of a gap there because you want the zip to be at five eighths of an inch. This stitching line to be five eighths of an inch and the zipper tape is not quite that long. So you want to make sure that you're getting your zip on the five eighths of an inch stitching line. Okay, so I have my zip in. I have a little hole that I need to close up at the top there. And I have matched up my centre seam. It is out by like a millimetre. I'm going to live with that. So I need to close up that top hole there and then the back and I'm going to do that with my regular zipper foot and I have moved the needle all the way over to the right and I'm going to do the same thing at the top at the, as at the bottom and I'll show you as I go. This is the top part of the zip so the first thing you're going to want to do is undo the zip so that the zipper pull is out of the way. Now don't be tempted to sew from here up to here because you will catch the zipper tape in your line of stitching which will make it visible ask me how I know. So I haven't picked mine and I've done the same thing that I do on the base when I'm sewing the base of the zip up to the hem. I have overlapped the stitching for the zip by about three eighths of an inch, back stitched there and then just stitched up and met the line of stitching from the neckline down and back stitch there which has closed up the hole and I'll show you what that looks like in a second but like I said we're going to do exactly the same thing at the base of the zip and the way I did this one is I treated it like the base of the zip so the zip is here this is the neckline and I sewed it like this this way so that I started here and finished here so we're going to need to turn it over and we're going to do exactly the same thing at the base of the zip to close up the back okay so as I said done the same thing here I've overlapped the base of the stitching from the zip uh, by probably about a quarter of an inch here, back stitched, and then stitched all the way down to the hem. So we need to press this open, and then we're going to sew the lining to the zipper. Okay, so we need to attach the lining to the main bodice, and we need to do that with some room between the zipper teeth which is this stitching line here so as you can see I'm about a quarter of an inch away and it is a little bit tricky at the top and we're going to have to do some hand stitching to finish the top of the lining and you can of course hand stitch this if you would like to but I do prefer to do it by machine because I just find that it is a little more secure you want to make sure that the bodice lining is folded up along the line that you've pressed earlier because that's going to come into play when we stitch in the ditch to secure it. Let's see if I can show you. This is the trouble with the sew along with the fabric which has not got a really obvious right and wrong side. Okay, so we've got 
our outer fabric this is the one with the zip in it already and the interfacing and then we have our lining which is the one with the interfacing at the neckline and what we need to do is secure the raw edge of the lining to the raw edge of the main fabric now you're going to not be able to get all the way in up here and sew it down easily because we have secured the top of the neckline two sort of three inches down so that's the bit that we're going to have to finish by hand with a ladder stitch in a minute but you should be able to wrangle it so that you have the two raw edges lining up now you're going to want the folded edge that you've pressed into your lining to be just an eighth of an inch further down than the bodice stitching which is this is the skirt and this is the lining and this is the seam that attaches the two together so you want your, your lining to be just about an eighth of an inch down because we've pressed it to be half an inch instead of th uh, five eighths of an inch which will help us with our stitching in the ditch later and you also want to offset the lining from the raw edge of the bodice by again about an eighth of an inch. Doing this will help make the bodice lining fit flush with the outer bodice because we're not sewing it right here. We just need to just take out a little bit of excess. So I'm going to start down this end and I'm going to pin and we're going to sew from this end for this side. For the other side you're going to sew from the top but for this side we're going to start down here. And things will get a little bit chunky up this end but as long as you're again careful, go slowly, just check, make sure that you're not catching anything that you don't want to catch, everything will be fine. So I'm going to pin this in place the whole way along and again just making sure there's that little bit of the lining poking over the edge of the body, outer bodice. Get all those stray threads out of the way. This is quite difficult to do with the camera in the way. And again we've got the right side of the bodice facing the right side of the lining so you can see the wrong side of the lining and the bodice here. I'm going to go all the way up and we should be able to pin to around about this point which is the top of the zipper and as I say the rest will just finish by hand with the ladder stitch. And it's around the top that you're going to want to be doubly sure that you're not catching any of the other bits of the bodice which is why we can't sew right to the top. So get that all pinned into place. Just use your fingers to make sure everything is out of the way and as I say we're going to be stitching to around about here. There's a little bit of something going on back there. I can feel that it's not flat. That's better. Okay. Right. So now that everything's pinned in place, we've got our regular zipper foot on and I have the needle on the right. Uh, sorry, I have the needle over to the left, but it's only just one tick over so that it doesn't hit the middle bar of this foot. So it's not all the way over to the left, just one tick over to the left so that you can sew with the foot, this foot on. And we're going to sew from the waist to the top of the zipper about a quarter of an inch away from this line of stitching and this line of stitching is what's securing the zipper in place so we'll be catching the zipper tape and securing the lining down okay so once you've sewn those two lines of stitching you're going to turn everything the right way out and obviously this is going to need a good press but this is the line of stitching that you've just done so as you can see here this hole at the top is what we're going to need to ladder stitch together a little bit later but the first thing i want to do is sew the waistline down and we're going to do that by stitching in the ditch so i have pinned the lining the whole way around the waist seam and i'm going to tack it in place usually i would pin like this and then move the pins over to the right side and just sew but i found that i get a much nicer and cleaner result if i tack this in place first so that everything stays exactly where i've put it and whilst i'm doing that i'll do the little bit of hand sewing on the lining so you can see here I've basted the lining in place and I'm now stitching in the ditch which is exactly what it sounds like. So I am running a line of stitching in the seam, the ditch of the seam that we have made that will keep the bodice to the skirt. And I like to, when I'm doing this, just put a little bit of tension on both the bodice and the skirt to really make sure that I get into that ditch there. 
So I'm going to continue to do that and finish off with back stitching at the beginning and the end. You want to bear in mind that you don't want to go right up to this part. You want to stop about a quarter of an inch away because you need to secure this in place and not interfere with the zipper teeth on your dress. So the bodice is lining is attached and I now need to remove the basting stitches so I'm going to do that. So the last thing that we need to do is hem this. I'm doing that with bias binding and unfortunately I ran out of the rainbow so I have used the turquoise to match the fabric. So I have done the same thing that I did with all the other bias binding. I've turned over the edge. I've got the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of the skirt. I've got the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the skirt. I'm now going to wrap this around and top stitch it down and then I can press it under and top stitch it down again to finish the hem. As ever, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. So when I traced the pattern and altered the pattern of this dress, I did it around about eight days before I actually made the dress and in those eight days, I did put on a little bit of weight. So you can notice in the twirls that the top section of the back is actually sitting a little bit higher. There's a little bit of extra fabric in there and that's because the waist section is way tighter than it probably should be and once I've lost that weight, it will actually all kind of sit a bit, little bit lower down but at the moment the fabric is riding up. I traced everything off, made my standard alterations to add length to the waist part of the dress. And after I'd made the muslin, I noticed that the seam line here wasn't sitting where I wanted it to. It was sitting a little bit high for my preference. So I went back and I added five eighths of an inch into this bodice part, which I did show you how to do. When I make this dress again, I am going to take that five eighths of an inch out of length out of the back part of the bodice and leave it in the front part of the bodice. I'm going to do that by taking a small wedge out of the back centre back, moving that up so that the side slates stay the same and match up but the back will be slightly shorter and I think that will help with the excess fabric that I'm finding in this dress. Having said that I love this and I will wear this as is but there are some tweaks that I want to make to it going forward. I will be doing those and I will be adding those onto the playlist for this sew along so keep your eyes peeled for that. This fabric I got from the textile center it is one of their stretch suitings and it is very very comfortable to wear it does have polyester in it so i wouldn't recommend wearing it on the warmest day in the world it is a very comfortable fabric to wear and they have it in quite a few colors and of course i will have listed it in the description bar down below i do think i'm going to make this dress again and as i say i probably will make the other view with the collar as well and with that one i won't take out the center seam of the front here and i would put buttons on it because i think that would really add to the look but with this one, I although I made the, 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 the muslin with the centre front seam, I didn't feel that the neckline was dramatic enough to warrant the, the added seam there and then the buttons. And, and the buttons would have hidden it, and it is a design detail, but it wasn't for me, which is why I chose to omit it. Of course, you can sew yours with the centre front seam and add buttons. That's completely up to you, and it does look beautiful. I just decided to make one without. As I mentioned in the first part of this sew along, this pattern was voted for by my Patreon peeps. And if you look along the bottom here, you will see a nice long list of everybody's name running along the bottom who took part in the vote. And thank you so much to every single one of you because your contributions to my channel really do make the world to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It is very much appreciated. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!